Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Thrustmaster True Quick Release Kit from Peter Makes Things. Using inexpensive eBay source quick releases and 3D printed parts to let you change your wheels on your Thrustmaster wheelbase faster than ever before. Time to put this kit through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Now for a closer look at the Thrustmaster True Quick Release System. <laughs> now, this Quick Release System is based on some 3D parts combined with a Quick Release that is readily available on eBay. We call it the eBay Chinese Quick Release. And that's what this assembly is. See the metal part there? And there's some more metal right here in this metal piece here. All of this is part of the Quick Release. The 3D part you see printed here is mounted. It's got a 70 millimeter PCD pattern on it, just like the Quick Release does inside, so that you can actually mount this 3D part to the wheel, the wheelbase side of a Quick Release, right? And then we have the wheel side Quick Release, and this is, again, this is the part of the Quick Release that you mount to your steering wheel so that you can put it on there. But you can see here that we have some 3D pieces that are mounted to this, all right? And we'll get to the 3D pieces in a second here, but let's just see how this works. First, the we have a big lug, the Thrustmaster, typical, the three smaller lugs with the big one that makes everything line up when we put things together in the Thrustmaster wheels. And you had the same thing going on there that's been 3D printed. So basically what we're doing is we're putting this in. There we go. And then I'm going to turn this outer part, which will lock the inner part. So I got to do it two-handed here to get this to work. There we go. See it sliding? And this pin's gonna pop up when it's locked in. So let's see if we can see that. There we go, see it pop up? So now we're locked in. And this is, it's actually a pretty tight, of course I'm just doing it by hand here, but it feels very tight. And again, this is the, what they call the eBay Chinese quick release. You probably, I wouldn't put this on my car, but uh, yeah, for, for simulator use, yeah, this, this is plenty for the, I'm gonna be using the uh, TSPC Thrustmaster wheelbase over here. And that's, this will be plenty for holding that torque, no problem at all. Then when you want to undo the quick release, you just press the button down and then rotate it counterclockwise because we went clockwise before. And yeah, it's going to, and this helps you, this little lip here helps you rotate it. And then we're back off and then we can put another wheel on. And I got a couple of wheels that I'm gonna be putting these wheel sides on and we'll go through all that when we get there. But let's talk about this 3D printed piece. First off, this is PLA and it's bolted or screwed onto, and you can see the screws in the back there, see how that works, to the, I'm calling this the male side of the quick release because it, it goes inside of this little piece here. It depends, you know, it doesn't matter what would you call it. But yeah, this is, actually the 3D pieces are done in PLA and really nicely done. Everything fits well. We have a, and this is a little adapter, you see it rattling around here that's gonna go into the wheel, take the place of the hub that's on the wheel now. And you see this little groove is cut in here. This is so we can actually take the plug that's on the back of these steering wheels, obviously for the electronics. You see the two screws on that there? And it's kind of got that the same shape as this, right? So we can take this off of this wheel and bolt this to the wheel and bring that plug up right so that it's going to screw into these two we even got two holes there ready for it and we'll screw it to that and then when we put our wheels in it'll go in it'll rotate and then yeah we're, we're good to go as far as all the buttons it'll be thrustmaster wheelbase will never know the difference on what's going on here let's talk about the wheelbase side and this is where the mechanicals are as far as rotating and you know the pin popping up and all that stuff happens and this, again, this all, this all this metal part here is part of the quick release, the original one, the metal here, obviously, and this is all bolted together. Again, we have a 70 millimeter PCD pattern here, and this 3D piece, this is again PLA here, has been bolted on just like you would bolt any adapter to the quick release or the wheel side quick release of this quick release system. Now, there is a different part. Now, well, before I do that, you see these screws in there? Now, remember these lugs in here, are 3D printed, and he actually drilled some screw holes in here. I don't know if they drilled it or left it in there from the 3D print. It looks like it was left in there from the 3D print because you can see they're actually hex shaped. So they'll hold the nuts when you put them in there and tighten this down. 
So the screws are in there, and you can see the top of them there, to reinforce these lugs. So when you're taking the torque on them, they're even stronger than they would normally be with the PLA. And this is pretty thick. As you can see, it runs pretty deep there. So these lugs are very thick. I, I don't see any problem with them getting weak and breaking, but you never know. But that's why they put the metal screws in there. Very, very clever idea, actually. I first saw that. I said, man, that is, that's pretty neat that they thought about that. Of course, it could have been that they were having a problem before. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's a good solution. Uh, a nut and a screw going in the top there like that. Very cool. I like the way they did that. And they've got some rubber pieces here, by the way, in this quick release. It's part of the quick release, the original quick release system that when you put this in here and it pulls it down, this rubber pushes back against the other interface, the surface of it, which locks it down and keeps it nice and tight. That's one of the reasons why it feels so tight when it's on. Right. So, yeah, not much else to see here. Oh, one more thing. This piece here is actually uh, PTEG, this ring here. And the whole reason this ring is here is because this is very slick. This surface here, and it's also slick here, the anodized aluminum bits, very slick, and it, it gets hard to grip, according to the manufacturer. That, that You know, you get sweaty hands or whatever, and it's just not easy to turn. So he put, made this 3D print, obviously, piece hanging up here with the screw going through it to kind of close down on that, on, on this slick aluminum part, and there's actually a rubber band in there. See that? And you can actually see some of it there you go, going all the way around. And what that does is, is give us a grip to grab instead of this metal here. It, and this is a little bit more sticky feeling. Plus we have this nice notch to grab to twist it on and off, right? Go that way, bring it back that way. So to make it, it just gives you a grip that you normally wouldn't have. It makes it easier to do. Again, a nice little thing. And this is PTEG because PTEG is a little bit, you know, it's more flexible than regular PLA, which is what everything else is made of. Very cool the way this is made and the way it fits together. Yeah, it's um, yeah for a real a, a quick release for a, a Thrustmaster system. This is going to be a treat, I think. You know, because I've seen some other you know quick release systems out there, but this is man. Once you tighten this down, and that pops up and locks it down. And it, what it does again was pull this piece into the other metal piece with those rubber uh, grommets in there, or the rubber studs, or whatever they want to call them pulls it down tight on those, man. It just feels tight in the hand. And I'm sure on the wheel, it's gonna feel tight too. So, anything else we wanna talk about here? Let me go ahead and twist it back out. Man, it, it's, it's stiff, it's stiff. Of course, these little rubber pieces, again, are, are doing a great job. It's, I like the way they use those. And they're not, they're not wear items as far as twisting because there's no rotation. As you can see, we have a tab there, or rather a groove there, and we have a tab here and those actually lock together. So there's no, there, these metal surfaces here are not, is not scraping against that rubber. It, it's just being pulled into that rubber and the rubber's pushing back to it, which gives it that nice stiff feel to it. And of course we have lugs here. See these little raised areas here that are locking into the aluminum pieces here. You can see the lugs there are the grooves where they match and then they rotate and lock in. Very cool. I like this. I like the way this is working, especially when for the Thrustmaster stuff. Now, all we've got to do is put these, uh, this one, right, onto our Thrustmaster wheel, which is really not, really not that hard. It's not that big of a deal. Just got to take your time, be a little patient with it. So I got two of these. I got one here, and I got one here for the wheels. Because I'm going to put one on here, and I'm going to put it on this other Thrustmaster wheel that I have right here, right. So then we can actually do a real good test as far as switching out the wheels while we're using it. And I'm curious to see if I'm using this, like say in iRacing and I pull this wheel off and put this one on, if it remembers the buttons and shifter positions. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering, because remember this box over here or the wheelbase is doing all the translation. So really the computer is only seeing the box. It's not really seeing the wheel. So yeah, I'm curious about that and just how the system's gonna work in general. So when we come back, we're gonna actually start installing the bits on the wheel. And of course, we have this adapter that we're gonna be installing on our TSPC racer base. All right, so we'll do that when we get back. Before we get to the actual assembly or putting this onto the wheelbase and these onto our actual wheels, I did wanna touch a bit on the shimming that you may need to do to get this thing to fit right. There's no shimming on this side, it's on this one. Now remember, when you buy this kit from Peter Makes Things or his eBay site, here's the eBay listing here is a shot of it. And I'm going to put a link to it in the description 
for this review. And yeah, once you get that kit, you get all the 3D parts. And remember, we're using a, you know, this cheapy Chinese quick release system that I discussed in the closer look. And here's a shot of one of those on eBay, just some generic listing. I don't even know who it is. But yeah, easy to find these and, you know, $15, $16. Yeah, you're good to go. But anyway, so when you first put this in and you're test fitting it, you've put your 3D part into the ring here. You've screwed it in back in the back with those screws you see back there. There's three of them. There's the other one. There it is. And yeah, once you have this in here, and you don't even have this part on yet. This is obviously the adapter that's going into our steering wheel. Once this is all lined up like you want it to be, you, you'll put it in here and actually test fit it. And what we're looking for here, well, I guess I better open this first, huh? <laughs> Won't go in unless it's open. So what you're looking for is a nice tight fit, obviously. And when you push this in, as you saw before in closer look, and then we turn this in the clockwise direction, and I'm doing it by hand here. Yeah, this is a nice fit. Nice and tight, it's not too loose or it's not too tight to where you can't close it. And the shims that you see, that you saw in that listing that I showed you, actually are so that you can make this fit right because there's a lot of variance. This is very tight. There's a lot of variance in the tolerances between these surfaces and these surfaces, right? As you might expect, especially for the price. So there's the shims that you can use and, and typically it's going to be too tight to begin with if you have a problem. And you'll see those circular shims that I'll show you another shot of them here. And there's actually two of them in here. Now, he, uh, Peter actually re pre did these for me before he sent them to me to make sure they were fitting quite well. And if you look closely here, right in here between the adapter, this PLA bit and the metal bit over here, you can actually see two, there it is, two of those spacers. So obviously this one did not fit right out of the box. So we had to use two of those circular spacers I just showed you. Now there is another spacer that once we get this thing going in and, and it's, it, we get our two spacers in, let's say in this, let's say it was still too, uh, too tight. Then the smaller spacer you see that the ring would fit on the lug part here and you slide on there, right? And that would adjust it again, like 0.6 millimeters or something. So there is a fitment process. I just want to point that out before, you know, we get to actually installing these because I didn't want you guys to get these 3D parts and then get your quick release and go, man, this thing is loose. Um, I've got a link. He actually has done a very good video on how to fit this and get it fitted. So yeah, I'm just going to link to his video because it's, you know, I don't, I don't have the spacers because it's already done here. And yeah, he does a very good job with it actually on his YouTube channel. So just want to point that out to you before we get started here and putting this stuff together. So right, all we have to do now is put this one on the wheelbase and then we're going to put this one on our wheels. And remember we have two of these, so we're gonna, each one of these wheels is going to get one. So when we come back, we'll actually be assembling these to our wheel and wheelbase. Now we can start to assemble our quick release system onto our wheels and the wheelbase. The wheelbase is the easiest one to do because, well, we've already got the threaded piece here that obviously every single one of Thrustmaster's <laughs> wheels have on it. So we're basically just going to use the locking collar right here and, and install it just like we normally would. Just got to make sure that the lugs are lining up properly. And in this case, the large lug is on the bottom here and the other three small ones are around it. And I'm looking over here and it looks like my lug is the big ones on the top. So I'll just flip it around like this and slide it on just like you would a steering wheel. Very simple. And then of course we're going to rotate the collar counterclockwise until we get it tight. And then when we feel like we have it tight enough, we tighten the screw, the locking screw. And I've never quite liked this locking screw <laughs> the deal, but I'll have to say that it does work. So we'll just go ahead and tighten that puppy down all the way in. And this being a new essential wheel that we're putting on this, it's going to be a little tough as I first put it in here. So I'll go ahead and keep screwing this down. It's not easy. Got to put some pressure on it to make sure we don't hop out of the 
little Phillips screw up here because that'll strip out very easily. And you can get another one. These are pretty easy to, to source, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. So my grommet came off. Right. And there we have it. How easy was that? <laughs> that you doesn't get much easier than that to install something, does it? And I'm going to go ahead and put the big lug back on top for future use. Now let's get to the wheel. I think I'm going to do the Ferrari first. And then I'll do the oh, <laughs> I'll do the open wheel next. And they should be identical. So I'll probably just show you the little shots of me doing that one um, later on because they they're, should be exactly the same the way these come apart. Now we're going to be putting this in place of this piece of hub right here on the back of the wheel. What we normally see, obviously, if you have a Thrustmaster wheel. And this, you can see there's actually a little line all the way around there, so it will come out of the base pretty easily. There's three screws in the front that we are interested in here. That'll be these two top ones right here and right here, and the bottom middle one right there. So I'm going to take those three screws out and see what happens. Now these screws are flatheads and they are 2.5 millimeters as far as the hex size that you want to use as far as your wrench when taking them out. So let's go ahead and run those out. Very simple thing to do here, obviously. Not much to it. Well, I like to loosen them up first before I take them all the way out. Just make sure there's no binding up as I'm loosening one or the other. Go ahead and put those in the dish. We actually will not be using these screws. When we go back in, we have these screws that are on these quick release hubs that we'll be using because they have to be much longer than these. These are, I believe these are 10 mil. They might be 15. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, they're actually, well, I guess the whole screw with a flathead. Yeah, it's a 15 mil. So these are the 15 mils flatheads that come out of the wheel. And they got, you can see they have a little bit of blue thread lock on there. Right, so now I'm going to grab the bottom of the wheel where the hub is, wrench out of the way, flip it around, and this should come out. Now you might have to do a little wiggling on it or wiggling with it to get it to come out. I'll just do that so you guys can watch that. I'm just kind of picking up and there you go, back and forth. Now I can feel tension already on this hub as I'm pulling it out that, yeah, there is obviously going to be a wire because of the DIN plug it's sitting there. And we're going to gently pull this up, like so. And I'm going to tilt it sideways so you guys can see. Okay, it looks like the wire's kind of tucked in. Let me get something to get my pointer here. Maybe that'll do it. Help that wire come out a little bit. There we go. So I kind of just, I'm kind of just picking up on the wire because it was kind of tucked around the circular part of this hub on the top. But this is what we we'll see when you get it off. Right, you can see the plug there, and we have a screw with a ground wire on the circuit board. And this is what we want to take off. Now, you can do this with the hub on here, or well, actually, you have to do this with the hub on there. <laughs> not there's no or to this. You and it's not that hard. You just got to get the the wire kind of straightened out a little bit, and you can really get this hub completely out of your way. Now, what I'm going to do first is take the ground screw, and that's a Phillips screw there, that ground screw that's holding the ground wire onto the circuit board. And I'm going to very carefully take that out. And you're going to be careful here, just take your time, because you do not want to touch or hit any of those circuits. And it looks like we've got resistors, we've got capacitors in here, inductors, you know, the usual suspects when you're looking at a circuit board. So we don't want to hit any of those. And just, they should come out pretty easily, you shouldn't have to put too much pressure on this screw. And it's coming out for fairly easily here. It's pretty loose. And it's not a very long one, so yeah. And I'm going to see if I can get this screw just to come out. Oh, it's still hanging in the wire, which is okay as long as it's not interfering with anything else. All right. So there's our ground wire. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get that screw out. Come on, screw. Let go. Okay, I'm, this is going to be a two-hander, so I'm going to have to do it this way. Got it. Again, it has those sheet metal like grooves in the screw. And a little Phillips head with a little flange on it. We're going to need that again so we don't lose that. Now we have the plug to deal with. Again, the only thing here is how you're going to get that plug loose. 
And fortunately, there's no glue, or sometimes you'll see some black RTV on some manufacturers. Put, oh, <laughs> well, it's on there pretty good. It didn't come out with the, the hub getting loose. But sometimes there's RTV on there. You have to take a razor blade and cut around to get everything up, and it really is messy. But we're fortunate here it's just the plug. Now, you could just reach down in here with your fingernail and kind of pry on one side, and then go to the other side and pry a little bit. But I usually, I have some tools, obviously, in, in the old SRG, and I use this guy. See how it's got some kind of thin tips on it? And it's a non-conductive kind of material that you use for removing trim from our door panels and things like that from the interior of a car. Anyway, I'm going to put this back down and use the corner here, this little edge, as a, lever, as a little lever edge to get grab onto. And then I'm going to put these two prongs. I don't know if you can see this that well, but there's actually a lip or an edge on this plug. Mm, see if you guys see that neat. There's a little lip there that I'm able to get these two prongs on. And then I'll use the back of the casing as a little lever. Just put a little leverage on it. Just very gently get it started to come out. And again, I want to be very careful here. I don't want anything to snap out if I can avoid it. And I'm just kind of rotating back and forth, right? Kind of scooching it a little bit. And yeah, it looks like it's moving. It's like one side's tougher than the other. But again, we want to be careful here that we don't mess up the board. And I think I got it loose there. So once it's loose, then it's easy just to... In fact, I might... Well, I don't want to do that way. I'm going to actually get my fingernail back in here and pry on the this, this side that was a little sluggish coming out. And there it goes. Just popped right out. And there we have it. Okay. And this is a six-pin Molex plug. Very common what we find in electronics. So, yeah. And nicely done here, of course, being a factory Thrustmaster part, as you would expect. So, And we're going to have to take this out. We're done with the wheel for now, but we want to take this out of here. And, of course, you see we have two Phillips screws. And we're going to take those out, again, with our Phillips screwdriver. And, again, pretty simple here. You know, it's not, not rocket science to take this plug out or take the screws out. It's a little, little more tricky to get the plug to come out. So I'm just going to undo these screws. Again, I'll get one loose, and then I'll go to get the other one loose because I don't want one, again, binding up on me if I take one all the way out without loosening the other first. And these are coming out pretty easy. Again, they're the same type of screws that we saw on the circuit board. Put that right there. And grab this one. There you go. And you can see these also have that aggressive thread on them and that little flange Phillips head. We're going to be using the, all three of those again, so I'll put them in my little dish over here so that I don't lose them. It'd be a bad thing to lose them. Right. So now we have everything loose. All right. So what I'm going to do now is figure out how I'm going to snake this through here. <laughs> well, we have to, this piece here, you see that? It, it looks like it's, let me get this out of the way. It looks like it's something you could pull off, but you can't. It's, it's molded into or glued or one or the other into this hub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plug and I'm going to kind of get it sideways and you can see you can, you can kind of this roll and twist it a little bit so it becomes like a sideways profile here, right? To go through that hole. That's that's what I'm going to try to do. And you don't want to put too much pressure obviously. You don't want to grab it and wrestle it down and pinch anything. Just want to be careful with it. But it should go on through. So that's the idea and that's what we're going to do here. So once I get the first part of that plug in, you can see the wires are kind of sticking up. Just kind of push those down a little bit as I'm kind of twisting it around. It's not that hard to do. You just got to be careful. You don't want to snag anything and cause problems. And there we go. And you see the ground wire will follow as I pull it through. And there it is. Simple enough. So there is the Thrustmaster hub. And yeah, not much to see here. One thing you want to pay attention to here is this little slot right here all right because there is a guide on this wheel on the plastic part see a little tab up here that's what that slot is for and we have one on the other hub that we're going to be putting it back in here now let's take this hub which the one we're going to be putting obviously on our steering wheel and see how we're going to get that put on now first off i'm going to take the screws out of the back of this because this is holding our little hub adapter, if you will, piece on there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. 
And these look like they may be stainless. They're flathead, obviously. They're M5s with a .8 pitch on them. And I believe these are 45 mil long. Yeah, definitely stainless. They don't stick in the dish very well, the magnetic dish. And I think these are 45s. Yes. 48.3 or 2. So the reason I'm showing you that is these are silver, obviously, and the screws that come out are black. So you're going to have a silver screw head on your black wheel now in case you want to get some black long ones like this and turn that into black. But yeah, high quality stainless steel screw is why this is silver. So now we have the adapter. And like I was saying before, there is a little notch right in here that's going to fit into the back of the steering wheel itself in the case that little tab right up here that we saw before and it will go in just like this but here's what I'm gonna do I am going to before I get to that point I'm going to put this wire actually I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this and there's a, actually a video on YouTube from Peter A who makes this that shows how he does it. But the, the thing is, well, the consideration is here, getting this wire through here, which is easy enough. You can actually put it in through the bottom. And that's what I think I'm going to do. I want to put the wire on first, back inside the wheel. All right? So that's the same procedure as when we took it out. I'm going to put the plug in first, and then I'll secure the ground wire with our little ground wire screw that is over here. I was looking at the wrong dish. <laughs> Right, so let's go ahead and do that. And again, if you saw me taking the plug out, we're going to put that back into that Molex plug the same way it came out. And it came out with these silver tabs. You guys can see that there pointing up. So I know that's the way it's going back in. So I, you know, I just paid attention to that as I was taking it out. So let's go ahead and slide this puppy back in. And I don't know how well you guys are going to see this because it's kind of off canter here. But I'm just going to take it, and I'm probably going to block you when I'm putting it in. But yeah, I'm just looking down inside of there as I'm presenting the Molex male plug. And just going to get it to where it's supposed to be. All right, it's not all the way in yet. We can still see those metal tabs. And we still see a little bit of that, I think, even when it's in. Let me see. So I'm going to take both of my fingernails here and kind of just wiggle it in back and forth until I can get it to seat properly. And there it goes. So yeah, you can know it's seated properly. Let's get our wire out of the way when you don't see those silver tabs anymore. So that should be all the way in. Now the only thing left is to put our short Phillips screw. Remember, this is the short one for the ground wire on the circuit board. The other ones are longer. You see the difference there? There's a little nubby thing. So very carefully, we're going to put this back in. And depending on how you want to do it, I'm going to put the screw through this little hole first. All right. A little eyelet there. And then I'm going to kind of just rest it down into the hole of the screw. I can see where that's going in and then just kind of just screw it in. Again, you don't have to put a lot of pressure on this stuff. It's just going into a circuit board or actually there's a little piece of plastic probably behind it that's receiving this this screw. Now, before I tighten it all the way down, I just want to make sure I have the ground wire, some slack in that ground wire. It was actually twisting around on me a little bit. And I'll show you what I mean here. I'm just snugging that up, and you do not want to over tighten that and snap that board. I just moved it, the ground wire. It was sticking over here, which put a little, you know, it was kind of stretching the wire out. So I'm going to leave a little slack in there. Right, so now we're back together. Now all I've got to do is put this back through our hub assembly. And I'll take again, watching where this piece is, our little slot there and make sure it goes into our tab on the top and just let the plug kind of flow through there and just let it rest right there. Now what I'm going to do is take the wire and before I do this I'm kind of going to just kind of twist it around a little bit so I can get it as long as possible because it's, it's not the it's, it's kind of shortish, but it should be plenty of room for you to do this. So now I'm going to, and it's kind of neat the way you cut this in here. 
so we don't have to wrestle with much. It just kind of slides all the way through. And I'm seeing where this is oriented. And I believe that the big lug is going to go towards the top. And the big lug, I'm just over here looking, checking is where we want the pin with no pin to be. Or <laughs> the plug with no pin. And I'm going to point this out because this is important. If you notice the pin out on this, on the bottom here where my finger is, in the very bottom part, there is no pin there. You see the plastic post, but there's just no pin down there. That's what we want to go or be sitting on the big lug part of our hub when we screw this down. And I'll, I'll show you again once we get it through here. But I'm going to carefully put this through here again. The key thing here is just don't put a lot of stress on this. Don't pull on this too much. Yeah, it's, you just don't want to do that too much and cause any problems. And this really slides in through very easily. See that? How easy is that, huh? And my big lug, I want that to be at the top of the steering wheel, so I'm spinning that around. Now you can see my big lug is oriented towards the top of the wheel. And the big lug is also where I'm going to have my pin, or no pin rather, to be oriented. Now there's two ways to do this. You can see it's kind of midway, right? naturally kind of hanging there. I can twist it this way or I can twist it the other way. I'm going to twist it this way to put it back on here. Now at this point that I have this through, I could actually go ahead and secure this. And I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to take my long screws here that we have in the dish and feed one from the front. And I'm also going to look at this big lug here. I'm going to look at where those holes are. And they should be lining up with our empty holes here that we took the screws out of, right? This one here, this one here, and this one here. So what I'm going to do is put one in, and at the same time I'm going to kind of look around the back here and kind of locate this screw coming through the adapter first. Let me show you guys that. The screw coming through there. And then I'm going to look at the hole here that I want to line up with that. Again, keeping my big lug on the top and watching it and just kind of, you can tell when it kind of gets in there and starts to go bite. You just need to turn it a couple times, right? You want it very loose because I still got three screw or two screws rather to go. So I'm going to take the other one here and do the same thing. And I'm looking straight down and watching what's going on when this screw comes out of the adapter. And yeah, it looks like I'm getting a bite there. Yes, it's like fishing, getting a bite. Right, and I can pull back on this to know that I'm actually have some threads in there. So now the third one should line up, kind of a self-aligning thing. So let's see what happens. I'm just going to put, I'm not even going to look at the back. I'm just going to put it in feel for it. Yep, there it goes. All right. So the ones we took out were two and a half mil. The ones we're putting back in are also two and a half mil. So I'll go ahead and put this on. I'm not going to tighten, do a final tighten on this. I'm just going to kind of Snug things up a little bit to keep it from moving around on me when I secure. So when I'm securing the plug, the reason I'm doing this is securing the plug on the other side. I want I want a nice solid base to work with when I'm putting those screws in. And the reason is because I'm cutting new threads in those that 3D printed part, and I want a nice solid platform to operate from instead of just trying to sit here and hold this in my hand and then screw it in. You know, get the screws lined up and try to screw it in. Yeah. I don't want to do that. So again, I'm watching my orientation. We got the big lug on the top, all the smaller ones around it. And I want the part with the no pin, which is also another easy way to tell. See that dent in this plug? That's where the no pin is. <laughs> There's a no pin there. So that's another way to guide it in and look at it while you're going to put this on. Now, we're going to use the exactly the same or exactly the same screws that we took out of the adapter when we removed it from the other Thrustmaster hub. And you see we have two holes here that we're going to be screwing it into. And again, those holes do not have threads in them yet, never been used. So that's why I wanted a nice strong base to get these things started. So I'm just going to kind of hold the plug there and put the screw through. And then what I'm going to do is watch the screw as it enters that hole right there. All right. And you guys can see that a little closer. So I'm kind of watching that, what it's doing, going into the hole. Just get it started and making sure it stays perpendicular to this plane here as I'm screwing it down, or as much as I can get it to do that. So I got one started. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the other one and get it started. Again, sanity check here. 
make sure my orientation is right on this plug because you you know it's it's you don't want to have to do this twice or three times or however many times it takes me <laughs> so now i'm going ahead and i'm going to go ahead and press this down and tighten these screws up here looking good actually and again we don't want to slip out of the screw and we want to attach this firmly but you don't want to strip this out you just want to go until you get some good resistance and then leave it at that because remember this is an electrical plug it's not a load bearing piece so you don't have to crank down on it right so looks like we might have this done all right we got our plug in there we're checking orientation again big lug is at the top of my steering wheel yes the little notch you can see there on the plug is on the top which means that's where there is no pin check so now test fit this is the fun part and again i'm looking down inside of here just again as a little sanity check before i do this to make sure it all looks like it's supposed to and make sure obviously that my quick release is all the way open it's not halfway or anything like that it's all the way open and this is a matter of just pushing it in and just like that and then we're going to twist our quick release. I can remember how this goes on, right? This way, yeah. The quick release goes, to tighten it down, goes clockwise. And we just kind of turn it. I'll do that again. Well, that's pretty tight. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and just pop it in like that. Press it down clockwise. I'm turning it. And I can actually, you can actually grab that little nabber thing that they that he's got on that PTEG part with the screw through it. You can actually grab that, which may, is nice because it gives you more grip and then just kind of rotate it. Then it locks and we can see that the pin right here is sticking out now. So that means it's locked down. Wow, that's nice. Huh. Actually, that's working pretty good. And then of course to take it out, we'll just take the pin and press it down and then twist it at the same time. Now this nab, this little piece up here, handle, I call it a handle, is nice because it, it facilitates it moving. And once it's moving, it's easy to get moving. And then just kind of twist it off like that. And off she comes. Man, I like this already. Boy, it's a lot easier than, uh, you know, messing with the screw and unscrewing the collar and all that mess. Wow, I really like this. This is very cool. So we've got it done. Everything is working like it should, and I am going to do this wheel also, and I might show you guys some B-roll of that, but it should be identical. If it's not identical, then I will show you what the differences is, or differences are, rather, in a, another segment in this video. So Thrustmaster decided to make the open wheel a little bit different, <laughs> which makes sense, right? I mean, it couldn't be as easy as doing the Ferrari wheel over here. It's not that big of a deal if you're handy with the solder iron. You see that solder pad right there? Well, that's where our ground wire is. Now, you have two options here. All right, you can just unsolder it and then remove it and then put the plug back in once we have everything back in the hub and resolder it, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Or you could splice the ground wire, which means you could come in here and we could just cut some of this heat shrink away. See that heat shrink there? Hey, well, let me put this on the bottom. We can get some light on this subject. There we go. A little more light here. All right, so we've got some heat shrink over here. Let that hang. And we could actually take a razor blade and carefully cut that back so we can get enough of that black wire that we can cut it and then splice in the other plug wire. Or rather, we can actually cut it and then splice it once we put it back together through the hub assembly. When we plug this back in, then we would just splice it in. Still, to do a proper splice, I would want to solder and then heat shrink and everything. So really, at the end of the day, it's going to be easier just to get the soldering iron and hit that real quick, and it should pop right off in the same thing once I'm ready to put it back on. Once the plug is back in down here, I'll just take my tweezers and hold it over there and solder it back on. And I might do a little quick, short um, shot of that uh, of me doing that, I'm showing you how this is going to work. But anyway, we're, we're still going to do this because I want I want to put this one on here, this adapter, so I got I can do in between both wheels when I need to use them. So 
I'm not sure if I'm going to show you me actually soldering because that's a lot of setup for video and things, but I might. But in, in any case, we'll come back ready to, or with when we come back, if I don't show you the soldering, we'll have that on already. And of course, everything will be soldered and plugged back in. And yeah, we'll be ready to roll. But it's the exact same process, remember, as what we did already on the Ferrari rim over there. So yeah, it's not, no tricks or anything to it. This is going to go on exactly the same way with one caveat being I'm going to solder desolder and resolder that on and i'm probably not even going to change the solder on there just leave it alone unless it's it doesn't come off good and go back on good then i'll change it clean it up and make it right but that would mean me pulling actually i would want to pull the circuit board out to do that and get it to where i could do it you know clean everything up properly anyway we'll see what happens when we get back <laughs> i'm probably just going to not show you the soldering because it's going to be a quick a quick little dirty operation it's not going to take that much time so anyway when we come back we'll have the hub mounted one way or the other I'm happy to report that the surgery was a success. <laughs> now, yeah, we've got the hub on the open wheel wheel from Thrustmaster, and everything went in just like the it did on the Ferrari for F was it the 488, I believe, what they call this. And yeah, the, uh, I did have to do the soldering. Here's a shot of me actually desoldering it and. Yes, yeah, not that big of an issue if you have some decent, you know, a soldering iron and yeah, you do it right. You know what you're doing. It's pretty easy to take off. And then I'll show you some footage here. I'm actually putting it back on, re-soldering it back to the same pad with the same solder, by the way, because it all, it all came off real clean and went back on clean enough that it's not going to make a difference for the ground wire's performance. And then it was just a matter of putting everything back together. And here's, you, here's a shot of me just tightening up or putting the screws in on the front of the wheel. And yeah, once that was done, here, this is what we have. And again, you can see we do have the contrast of the silver on the black, but yeah, you can actually get some black screws if you want to keep it all black. And yeah, just get those 45 millimeter long M5 screws with a flat head on it and no problems. But yeah, this feels good. And everything went back together quite nicely. And we're going to test this one also. One thing I meant to say, uh, actually mentioned before on the last one when you first do this and you put these in here you want to make sure that and you clamp it down see it just goes on and I'm gonna reach under here and grab this and rotate it clockwise until the I hear the snap there it is you hear that snap and of course that's the button coming out but when I take this off again we press the button and get it to move in the counter this one's tight <laughs> get it to move in the counterclockwise position there we go okay and let it go what I want to what I do is just check the pins you want to look in there and make sure it doesn't look like the pins are getting bent everything looks pretty good there to me so just check the pins and make sure that's just to make sure things are lining up well with your plug inside of here right because we don't want to be putting this in and out and then you bend a pin and you have a problem so it's just something to to look out for i'm not saying that's going to happen but me being the nitpicky guy that i am yeah i'm always looking for stuff like that especially when i'm doing something new and i haven't done it before and you can see that all these pins are looking quite well on this plug too right so there it is we're all done and yeah the soldering was a bit of a an extra, you know, not a pain, I would say, because I, I solder a lot anyway, and it was just, just had to get the equipment out and do it real quick. But yeah, it's just one of those things that you do run across sometimes. And, you know, it's, it's funny how manufacturers manufacture things differently sometimes. And, and, you know, you think that they would keep it all the same, but yeah, whatever. So what we'll do next is mount up our wheelbase and get over to the rig and then do some driving and try to swap these two wheels out and I'm, like I said before, in a closer look, I'm curious if this maintains the buttons. Like if I'm in iRacing and I take one wheel off and put another one on, will the buttons, or at least the, the shifter, still map? And maybe some of these buttons will map. I don't know. So I got two here. I'm thinking it might because the button presses are being converted to USB through the wheelbase electronics and the circuit boards in here. So I'm, I'm hoping that that's going to work, that we still have the same button presses. But... Of course, my luck if we won't, but we'll find that out when, when we, so we actually get it on there and start driving it. Right, so we've got everything mounted up to the cockpit, and we have the Ferrari wheel on here first. And it, this does, I think, 
kick this out just a little bit more than the stock hub does, but not enough to really notice, I don't think. And there's certainly no, the only flex we have in this is the, <laughs> the actual wheel itself. It's, there's no real flex going on that's noticeable in the actual quick release itself. I mean, it's the typical, you know, lightweight Thrustmaster stuff that we have here. Right, so you're using your wheel, you're driving along, everything is great. Then we decide to switch tracks and switch cars. So easy enough, just turn it sideways like that so it's easy to get your hand on this, the PTEG part, which has got the little lever on it, and just press on that button there, and yeah, just move it. Counterclockwise, boom, it's off. Then it's a matter of just pulling this one off. I'll set it aside. We'll get our open wheel went up, press it in, make sure we get the lugs lined up like they're supposed to. There we go. Once it's in, just a matter of turning it back until we see the pin pop out. There it is. Cool. And you're ready to roll. How cool is this? I really like this. If you guys have ever switched between your Thrustmaster wheels, sure, you can do it with the screwdriver and the screw and all that, you know, to do all that. But boy, this certainly is something very convenient. If you've got a couple of wheels and you're switching between them, yeah, this is definitely the way to go. If you can, you know, if it's, if it's something that's important to you to be able to switch back and forth quickly. Right, now all you've got to do is get in, we'll get into the car and drive it. And then while I'm in game, I want to check in iRacing and see if it'll remember at least maybe the shifters or something or some of the buttons if I can swap in between them. Now I know there's other ways to get wheel profiles uh, set in iRacing and other games using a, a third-party software, but I try to avoid those at all, you know, it, as, as often as I can because it's just another process running on my computer. But with that said, we'll have to see what we have as far as functionality when we're in here. But yeah, this is so cool, man. Just press the button, bam, you're out. That is just nice. Let's go ahead and put the Ferrari back on there. One more time. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Bing. <laughs> that is cool. All right, so we'll get to driving next. So here we are in iRacing at Sebring, and we're in the Ferrari 488 GT3. Testing, we're going to use this wheel first, which is the open wheel. And I just wanted to go out and ride around. We know that the quick release is functioning as it should. I am just want to test the electrical connection here when you change out a wheel. And just want to have a little fun, too. <laughs> so, actually, I kind of like this open wheel. I always have this open wheel from Thrustmaster because it has a kind of a large grip on it. And it's a 280, I think this one's like 283, but it's supposed to be 280. And it just has a pretty good size for running GT cars and open wheel cars. Just one of those wheels, I think, that's kind of multifunctional. But yeah, just want to get out here and drive it a little bit. And everything's working fine. The shifters are working fine. The buttons are working fine. So let's go back in and press hold. And I, what I really want to see is, and get back out of the pits and back into the settings, is how it handles when I switch to the 488. GT wheel. Put that on the bottom there so it doesn't go flying anywhere. And now we'll go ahead and plug this in. And you can see the LEDs are initializing, which is a good sign. And I'm going to go into the settings real quick just to see what's working here. So, I, oh, the shifter's still working. There we go. See if uh, my black box. Let's see if that's working. Next black box. Yep, same button. How about that? All right, so everything should be working, including my pit or my get out of the car button, and it is. How about that? I'm actually a little surprised. So let's go ahead and see if it's actually working, and it is. All right, so I think that pretty much, and the LEDs are working. <laughs> I'm actually a little surprised here, guys, as I said before, that this is, you know, sometimes, you know, these electrical connections, when you're live on USB and, and these wheelbases, you know, it, it would not have surprised me if it had just rebooted when I put the wheel on or something like that. But it didn't do that. Everything seems to be okay. All our lights are working. All our buttons are working. So, yeah, I think we can call that a success. Huh. Of course, there's probably a couple of buttons in here that may have not have mapped or something like that, but I'm not going to worry about looking for that. 
Well, the real test here is what this quick release is doing, and I think we proved that, yeah, it's doing a pretty good job. And I'm just going to, for the heck of it, take it off again while I'm still in a running car. <laughs> and let's see if we can get this one back on. It is definitely a quick release. Ah, it's still working. Check it out. <laughs> so I was not expecting that. I thought for sure it wasn't going to work. Ha. Okay, let's see if I can get out of the car. Sure enough. Huh. All right. So I can declare this a successful test, I think. This quick release does a good job. There's no problem with the pin alignments. Everything lines up. And that was you know, another concern was if that was going to work or not. Now, when you get your quick release, there are shims included with it. So you can shim it because you might need to for fit. This was already shimmed up in, in perfect for me when I got it from Peter, uh, the guy that makes these things. And yeah, um, I'll mention that again in the final thoughts, just so you guys know what to do about that. Final thoughts on the Thrustmaster True Quick Release Kit from Peter Makes Things. <laughs> I always enjoyed using my Thrustmaster wheels when I was using them on a regular basis. The only thing that I didn't like was the Quick Release system, and not because it didn't work, but because I had to unscrew the Phillips head screw to change my wheels every time. I don't use a Thrustmaster wheelbase as my go-to wheelbase anymore, but it doesn't mean I can't appreciate how a true quick release system can make life a lot easier for those who do use a Thrustmaster wheelbase on a daily basis. This true quick release system takes easily sourced and inexpensive eBay quick releases and turns them into a very nice upgrade for your Thrustmaster wheel collection. The ability to quickly change from different wheels is always a plus no matter what wheelbase system you're driving. Using custom designed 3D printed PLA and PETG parts, this kit is easy to assemble and tune. The included shim selection should get your quick release connection nice and tight. I have included a link to Peter's video in this video's description section on how to use these shims to tune your fitment. So look for it there. You can purchase this kit from Peter on eBay, and I will also be providing a link to that listing. Overall, I think this is a great product. And if you are looking for a real or true quick release system for your Thrustmaster kit, you should have this one on your short list. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.